I'm Thomas Aikum, and I'm going to be telling you about our study, which looks at the possible role of network oscillations in modulating the strength of functional connectivity between anatomically connected brain regions. Why might the brain need such a mechanism? Well, local regions of the brain perform specialised computations, for example, processing a particular part of our sensory input, or doing a task such as language processing. Different behaviours may require different patterns of interaction between these regions, and that we can switch effortlessly between tasks suggests we have mechanisms that allow flexible routing of information through the fixed anatomical connectivity of the brain. The simplest way to make a network respond selectively to one input is to suppress activity in task-irrelevant task uh, input networks. However, this may not always be desirable. It may be useful to have mechanisms that allow connectivity between regions to be turned on and off without suppressing activity and hence computation in uh, distracting inputs. A clue to how this might be achieved comes from experiments showing task-dependent changes in the power or interregion coherence of network oscillations. The central idea behind oscillatory gating of signal flow is that if two different inputs to a network have different modulations, for example, one might be asynchronous and the other oscillating, then a receiving region may be able to respond to them with different gains by performing temporal filtering on the combined inputs. To evaluate whether activity observed in vivo is really consistent with this hypothesis, we need to develop a quantitative understanding of how these mechanisms might work. We developed a simple computational model of a convergent pathway in which several input networks representing orientation variables converge to a single output network. The task performed by the model is to act as a switch, allowing the variable represented in any one input to be represented in the output network while ignoring the other inputs. Variables are represented in the input networks as population codes in which individual neurons have bell-shaped firing rate tuning curves with respect to stimulus orientation. When all input networks are asynchronous, little information is available to the receiving network about the variable encoded in any one because they all contribute equally to the combined pattern of activity. We asked, if one of the input networks is switched from an asynchronous to an oscillating state, is more information available to the receiving region about the variable it encodes? Periodic modulation of the population codes provides a novel way of reading out the information encoded. Instead of looking at the spatial pattern of firing rates, we looked at the spatial pattern of the amplitude of firing rate oscillation at the frequency of the network oscillation. In regions of the network where the firing rates are low, the oscillation amplitude is also small, and in regions of the network where the firing rate is high, the amplitude is also large. Therefore, the spatial pattern of firing rate oscillation amplitude reproduces the spatial pattern of firing rates and can be decoded like a conventional rate code to recover the encoded stimulus. In the convergent pathway, asynchronous inputs contribute very little to the amplitude pattern of the combined input, so the stimulus encoded in the oscillating input network can be recovered by reading out the pattern of amplitude of the combined input activity. We found that these amplitude patterns could be read out or converted back into patterns of a uh, firing rate by a simple network that used a highly resonant layer of feedforward interneurons to act as a kind of bandpass filter. By changing the time courses of the synaptic or intrinsic conductances in these neurons, we could build filtering networks that were tuned to a range of different frequencies. Finally, if multiple inputs oscillate at different frequencies, a filtering network that can filter at a range of frequencies can pull out the stimulus encoded in any one of these oscillating input networks. This is a form of frequency division multiplexing for neural codes and works a lot like AM radio. Hi, I'm Dimitri Kuhlman. We're especially interested in the AM radio analogy because it provides a potential insight into why interneurons in the cortex are organized in the way they are. Several recent studies have shown that interneurons that belong to the same subtype can often be interconnected by both chemical and electrical synapses, whereas interneurons that belong to different subtypes tend not to show this connectivity. Now, different populations of interneurons are likely to have different preferred resonance frequencies, and so if it was possible to bias the excitability of different populations of interneurons, one could select among different frequencies and decode information carried at different preferred frequencies. An obvious possible mechanism for this would be through the release of neuromodulators from, from subcortical sources. 
And to go back to the AM radio analogy, this would be like choosing among favorite radio stations by pressing different preset buttons.